How do you start your morning? Philip Markoff liked to start his morning browsing the back pages of Craigslist. Remember when you'd fire up your PC and head over to the erotic services section and read ads like this? Oh, those were the days. But unfortunately, the erotic services section was permanently shut down after Philip Markoff used it to fuel a seven day robbery and murder spree throughout the streets of Boston, Massachusetts. There's always that one person that's gotta ruin it for everyone. Philip Haynes Markoff was born on February 12, 1986 in Cheryl, New York. Cheryl. His upbringing was completely average, but considering he had the advantage of loving parents and a good education, he's gotta be one of the dumbest criminals to ever walk the face of the earth. A criminal nincompoop. I mean, the guy was an absolute criminal disaster. His father was a dentist and his mother was an educator turned casino worker. Maybe that's why he developed a gambling addiction before he was old enough to tie his own shoelaces. I mean, the guy's seven day long crime spree dubbed the seven days of rage was basically one big gamble. He pretty much just selected his victims by playing eeny, meeny, miny, mo on the back pages of Craigslist. He just rolled the dice and hoped for the best with no attempt to cover his tracks whatsoever. What's the worst that could happen? After high school, Markoff enrolled at the State University of New York and studied biology. Chlorophyll? More like borophyll. And his free time. He liked to party and sexually harass young women. Hey Morgan, you should uh, wear those jeans more often. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. The guy who plays Markoff throughout this documentary? I'll take it. He deserves an Academy Award. This is some choice acting here. I love you, Pocket. What they say. You know, he's really bad in the documentary. <coughs> Careful now. While volunteering at a hospital in Albany, Markoff met the love of his life. Well, the second love of his life. Lady Gambling came first, obviously. Be a lady tonight. And it was love at first sight for both of them. Philip invites Megan along with him to the casinos. The casino? I mean, I guess that's a nice place to take a girl to show her that you're a stable catch. Stick with me long enough. Maybe someday I'll gamble away our house and our kids' college tuition. But it turns out that gambling wasn't his only vice. Philip goes by the name Sex Addict 53885 on sexual websites. Now, just like the 53,884 sex addicts to register on Craigslist before him, Markoff posted a photo of his dick and wrote, I enjoy women, older women, but I really want to meet a transgender slash transvestite slash transsexual for friendship and experimentation. Transgender slash transvestite slash transsexual? I mean, I like how he uses the acceptable terms throughout the decades. <laughs> Keeping your options open. Okay. Anyways, it worked. And he went out on a few hot dates. But apparently he enjoyed fucking them up just as much as he enjoyed fucking them. Philip Markoff's first victims of violence were the transgender community that he was hooking up with. Between stalking the back pages of Craigslist and terrorizing the local trans community, Markoff finally worked up the courage to propose to his girlfriend, or Pocket, as he called her. When they weren't busy studying, they created a quirky 11-page wedding website with a multiple-choice quiz about them for their friends and family. What should we ask them? This is Jeffrey. How about, what did Phil get me for an engagement gift? A, a prosthetic penis. Just try it. B, a coupon for a double mastectomy. You won't be needing them. C, golf clubs. In 2007, Markov graduated from med school. Oh, oh, I got another question for their wedding quiz. What did Philip buy himself as a graduation present? A, a premium subscription to Craigslist. B. Tickets to see Chris Angel in Vegas. C. A gun. 
If you guys ring in and get this one, I will die. Yeah, he bought a gun and hid it where every cringy medical student hides shit they don't want anyone to find. In his butt. In a hollowed out copy of Grey's Anatomy. No, not a DVD box set of Grey's Anatomy. Come on, folks. Grey with an A. The Human Anatomy Reference Book. If you were writing a novel, and you said that the med student had hidden a gun inside a carved out Gray's Anatomy book, people would think that's too far-fetched. But that's exactly what Philip Markoff did. After improving his right hook on a couple of gender non-conforming individuals, Markoff was ready for the real thing. Don't leave me alone, Pocket. I won't have enough to do to keep me busy. Victim one. Philip heads on down to the Westin Hotel in downtown Boston to meet with a Vegas-based escort for a massage. That's Craigslist code for blowjob. Obviously. She meets him at the elevator to size him up before inviting him into her room. Remember, Markov is like the most unassuming dude in the world. There's nothing to be afraid of. I think the last person that you expect to be a nutbag is Philip Markov. But once the door closed behind them, he immediately drew his gun, tied her up, and began rummaging through her belongings. Before he leaves, Markov has a strange request. Can I have your underwear? Can I have your panties? And she gave them to him. You would think that the guy with the online handle sexaddict53885 would be interested in having sex with the escort selling sex, but he wasn't. He just needed money to pay back some gambling debts and a five-figure student loan. Not to mention, the escort wasn't even trans, so who the fuck cares? Victim two. Markov responds to an ad from a New York-based escort who's staying at the Boston Marriott for the night. Apparently, he's got a thing for massages. His plan is to repeat the same winning strategy that he used just four days earlier. Hey, the name broke. Exactly. Tie her up, rob her, and politely ask if he can wear her panties home. <laughs> but it didn't go down like that. She fought back. And during the scuffle, she was shot three times. In a panic, Markov fled the scene. Very casually, very nonchalantly, walked out of the hotel like nothing had happened. Yeah, he casually walked out of the hotel all right and headed straight to the nearest casino to gamble away the money from his first holdup. The police instantly drew a connection between the murder and the recent robbery of the other escort. There was just too much on the method of operation that uh, was similar for them not to be the same person. They also had his email correspondence with the victim. Fuck, this guy's more digitally inept than BTK. Victim three. This time, Markov responds to an ad from a dancer, a dancer, dancer offering lap dances. That's Craigslist code for fucking. Markov arrived at the Holiday Inn where again, he's caught on surveillance. No fake beard, no cap pulled down over the eyes. Nah, he just waltzes through the fucking door, making chit chat with the desk clerk like he owns the place. But this time there's a twist. The exotic dancer's husband is waiting in the lobby for his wife to send him a text message, letting him know everything is okay. You know, the typical kinds of text messages exchanged by married couples. But with her hands tied behind her back, she couldn't message her husband. In a frenzy, he sent her a string of texts to make sure everything was okay. But she never responded. Concerned that his wife had an unsatisfied customer, the husband plowed through the door. Startled, Markov unwrapped the woman's panties from around his head and pointed his gun at the stranger, causing him to freeze in his tracks. After an awkward standoff, Markov grabbed the woman's panties and made a break for it. In the search for the so-called Craigslist killer, hotel surveillance video shows this man, and along with another armed robbery that occurred in Boston two weeks ago, police suspect all three cases are related. With his face splashed across the six o'clock news, you would think that he would go into hiding. Nah, he decided to go gambling with his fiance in Connecticut. I mean, why not, I guess? Might as well do what you love before going to jail for the rest of your life. After victim number one positively identified Markov after the police showed her a photo of his student card, she said that she was a million percent certain that it was 
you know, Markov. The Boston PD knew for certain they had the right man. Unfortunately for Markov, he never made it to the casino. The police pulled him over and he was arrested on the side of the road. During the search of his home, the police found what they were looking for. There was a, a, an embarrassment of, of evidence, to be quite honest with you. There was more evidence than we would ever need to prosecute the case. They found his gun and the hollowed out copy of Grey's Anatomy and like two seconds after one of the cops was like, okay, there's no way this med student was dumb enough to hide. Oh my God, what a fucking moron. Any other medical students with a brain would probably have tossed that gun in the Boston Harbor on their way out of the hotel. They also found his panty stash hidden under his bed. And we're not just talking about some dusty old panties that he lifted from the discount rack at a Walmart or public pool or something. No, two of the sets were covered in his first victim's DNA. Well, hers and like 25 other dudes. He took the undergarments of his victims so he could relive the crimes. By touching them, he could remember what he'd done. I think it's safe to say this freak was doing a little more than just touching them. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, when the police arrested him, his shoes were soaked in blood from the murder he committed. Like, I know that our education system is failing and all. Our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa. But how can a med school graduate be this fucking dumb? Today we're here to announce the arrest of Philip Markoff. 22 of Quincy. He's been charged with the murder of 26-year-old Julissa Brisman at the Copley Marriott Hotel on April 14th, 2009. While in prison, awaiting trial, Markoff was placed on suicide watch. Apparently, the lack of a craps table and slot machines finally got to him. Eventually, Markoff took the easy way out. Philip made a primitive scalpel out of a ballpoint pen and cut his arteries in a way that a medical student would know would lead to death. <laughs> Maybe the education system isn't failing after all. So what do you think? Would the police have found his victim's panties if he had hidden them inside a copy of Fifty Shades of Grey? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to murder that subscribe button and click that notification bell because I've got new killer content dropping all the time. And if you just can't get enough, you can also head over and follow on Instagram and TikTok for tons of new content almost daily.